<coughs> hey everyone, it's me again. Today I got you a video that should have come way earlier, but I'm a lazy ass bitch and the first descendant came in. And we're in waves too. So if you want content from this game, uh, let me know in the comments. But hey, let's talk about our video. This video, I myself have no clue where to start it from. So I'll just talk and let the conversation does its trick. The recent update gave us status rework and the one that got changed massively was the blast allowing it to literally blast enemies. Nice pun Pablo. Okay, 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 okay. You are bored from this joke. Okay, let me demonstrate. Last status effect once applied makes the enemy explodes after 1.5 seconds of status duration in a 5 meter radius dealing 30% of the damage that came from the weapon that applied the status effect. But if you increase the stacks surpassing the cap, which is 10 by the way, or simply killing the enemy, in this case, the enemy will explode, dealing 300% of the damage dealt in the same 5 meter radius. And by the way, this damage takes into consideration base damage, crit damage, blast mods, and faction damage mods. Basically, blast now is everything Gaz wished to be. Rest in peace, old Gaz. Anyways, after this explained, I want to talk about something interesting. You guys remember the need of armor stripping enemies on the long run to scale the damage further unless you're using Slash. We don't need that anymore. Bro, I really, really love Pablo. Pablo reduced the enemy's armor and adding a cap which is equal to 2700 armor which is 90% damage reduction and the health will scale to compensate the loss of armor reduction. Post production comments increasing the health will make all smash builds weaker so I had to mention about that. Continue with the video. With this you will be able to reduce the enemy's damage reduction with 10 corrosive stacks that removes like 80% of their armor resulting in a bigger damage than it used to be. You don't believe me? Well, here's my source, trustmebro.com. Also, another thing I want to talk about is how Lavos went from zero to hero, just with an augment named Valence Formation that allows Lavos to get elemental damage bonus that acts like a mod and forces its status effect. And by the way, the element can be a base element or a combined element and you get to choose by holding the abilities button that corresponds with the element you want. But hey, if you paid attention, I said forces its status effect. This means if you have corrosive on your weapon and you active electric, the electric will be added to the total combined corrosive mods, but you will be able to proc electric status effect and this opens some great modding ideas. I guess the engineer is super happy at the moment. <laughs> hey, that's pretty good. Anyways, and for those who's asking, yeah, Saren is absurdly strong with such setup, but let's be honest, at this point Saren goes where she pleases and I'm not gonna even try. What the f- Regardless of that, Saren has always been, since the day I started playing the game, giga strong and kept being an S tier Warframe. Okay, I've talked a lot, so what are we doing today? Well, killing mobs with the most absurd ways possible, so let's see what we are dealing with today. First, let's take a look at the stuff I'm using, because we have a lot of stuff coming new this update. First, I have melee influence that spreads the status effects in 20 meter radius, but that doesn't include physical damage effects, but it's fine. And this on the condition of proccing electric status effect, and this will be easily done, don't worry. Melee Affliction that increases the tax of a status effect that affects the enemy under a knockdown or a flunge resulted by a melee attack and this can be achieved by melee heavy attacks like scythes and some melee stances. Dexterity Arcanes the primary and secondary to sustain my combo duration. Primary Blight 
that give you crit damage and multi shot when dealing toxin damage. Primary Frostbite that does the same thing but different values and you need to deal cold damage with your weapon this time. Conjunction Voltage that increases the reload speed and multi shot on your secondary weapon. Cascadia Empowered that allows your secondary weapon to deal extra 750% more damage that matches the damage type of the status effect Rocked. The elementalist mods for each weapon archetype that increases your status effect damage by 90% and this stacks multiplicatively with all of your multipliers. Whew, that's a lot. So allow me now to show you how I've built my levels. So in the aura I have corrosive projection to reduce the enemy's armor and this will stack my corrosive stacks leaving a teeny tiny bit of armor for the enemies. Prime sure footed for the list I'm a new bot if you want to rely on his passive, feel free to do so. Adaptation for some damage reduction, precision intensify to increase my fourth ability's strength since I'm going to be adding my helmet ability on my fourth ability slot. Ogre reach and stretch to increase my range, especially because I'm using narrow minded to increase my duration and reduce my range so that so basically the range is to counteract the narrow-minded def negative effect. Prime continuity for the juicy duration and the status duration. Yeah, keep that in mind, we will use it. Valence formation, the augment that I've talked about. And I forgot to mention that it gives you 200% damage from the elements you picked. Umbral fiber to increase my armor and arcane blessing to increase my health. Now, the last arcane slot will be situational. If I'm using gun setups that needs the crit chance, I will be using Arcane Avenger. However, if I want to use a melee setup, I can use Arcane Reaper to give me healing and more armor. I know the Arcane is expensive, but uh, it's the only thing that can work here. With that aside, let me talk about what Helminth I'm using. It's either Nourish, Zara's Whisper, or Roar. And they all use the same build that I've showed you a few seconds ago. And let me explain why I chose them. Nourish is simply for the viral elemental damage multiplier. Uh, Roar for the bonus faction damage multiplier. Freeing me a mod slot for whatever mod I want. And Zara's Whisper if I have my viral and the faction damage factored in already. Allowing for more funny damage with void bubbles. Okay everybody, now I want you to pay attention to this section of the video because there will be a lot of alternative to a lot of the stuff I'm using. So I've showed you the levels build in the last section, so let's take a look at some weapon synergies. First I have the dual equals the infamous weapon with the toxin clouds from its incarnate evolution. In the other evolutions I have this one, this one, and this one. So let's take a look at the build I'm using. The build is fairly simple. I have my smite mod, the pressure point, the full base damage, prime reach for some uh, range, rainbow modding for uh, corrosive and blast, BP wounds for static strength, absolutely, and berserker fury for some attack speed. And I have melee influence to spread these status effects among the enemies. But you will be asking. Where am I sourcing my electric to activate the arcane? This will be easily done with my valence formation. As I mentioned, you get a forced status effect of the element of your choice. So I just select electric and activate it. So it will add to my corrosive and proc electric, thus procing the influence. If you don't want to use nourish, you can swap the uh, prime smite grenier with melee elementalist for more damage overall, since roar, as I mentioned, is a, works as a faction damage multiplier. But I feel having the barrel is way beneficial, in my opinion, absolutely. Next, I'll show you a weapon you probably never heard of. Even I, myself, didn't know about it. Which is the Kratinos, I think it's spelled that way. This weapon is really nice, it has a nice gimmick that allows it to extend its range when you heavy attack after 12 times combo. So, you have the option of removing Prime Reach, but I actually felt it was... Eh. So, keep a Prime Reach. Again, with the Rainbow modding, Static Chance, Condition Overload, because it's a light attack build. Again, with the melee Influence, and... Berserker Fury for the attack speed. And also, again, you can 
But there is a, th a thing I didn't pay attention to. This weapon has innate viral, so you can actually replace faction damage bonus and add melee and elementalist, and you're free to go. For this, you can benefit from Venom's formation by forming magnetic. It won't affect the rainbow modding, and you still have your uh, electric and discipline merit for Tenokai, so you can heavy attack when you're 12 times combo and don't consume it, and you don't have to bonus once again. This is how it looks when you activate its passive. Also, I forgot to mention about Harmony. This weapon is absolute insanity, and it will also be paired with melee affliction, but hmm, let that aside for a second. Harmony has a gimmick which works just as expedite suffering. Let me demonstrate. You guys know that all sides forces a slash on the heavy attack, right? So explain this. Explain to me this. Yeah, that's a two billion. Again. Another two billion. Another two billion. This is how the effect actually works. If you remember, Expelite Suffering takes all the damage over time effect on the target and combine it in a one tick and multiplies it then let it go in one go resulting in a massive damage so what this weapon does is actually the same so i'm adding the electric status effect to add to the dot of slash a melee affliction adds another six stacks when enemies are knocked down or plunged by a melee and this is great with sights due to how the animation of the heavy attack works well this is what i'm using prime pressure point for base damage sacrificial steel for critical chance grab charge for an initial combo amalgam uh, only shadow for uh, uh, critical damage and heavy attack line and speak and blow for more base damage for heavy attacks and another 60 percent for heavy attack wind up speed prime reach for absolutely the range because if you're not using range i don't know what are you doing with a melee and melee ele elementalist to increase the status effect damage and this will add to the damage of the heavy attack and the expedite effect and lasting sting to increase my status duration since the damage is dealt on the duration for example the slash take deals damage over six seconds so when you take all of the damage of the six seconds and increase the duration you will result in bigger damage and by the way lavos increases the status duration if you can look at this place increasing the duration increases the status duration of fewer status effects on any other on any other weapon it doesn't matter but in this exact setup levels shines because look this is a 240 foot this is a 245 percent status duration and i get another 110 percent from lasting sting so it's a giga giga damage the exodus slot is up to you, but if my if you want my recommendation, go with dispatch overdrive to give you extra extra movement speed or more active gear. Well melees you can actually go with a lot of melees now, like the Raptor Dog Dagger, the Sambori if you want to go with the a slam attack setup. The Oma is a really nice pick because it already has an uh, electric. Oh even the Zorish is a nice pick to take because it forces electric. So you can mod for other elements and you still get the electric for melee influence. But other than melees, you can go with some unique weapons like the Kumanuka for example. And this is the build I'm using. First of all, this is a magnetic nuclear as you see. I have my punch through and the rainbow modding again. And already have radiation so I have multiple elements. And, and I have conjunction voltage to give me a real speed and multi shot. But this one activates on electrics. This is where the transformation comes into play. I form electric and use it. I activate this arcane. I get the bonus electric. And this is the build I'm using. I have the pistol pestilence. Expel of murmur because I tested on murmur. I have 
last and electric and i form corrosive with my valence formation and i have conjunction voltage to give me to give me reload speed and multi shot whenever i proc electric and my base damage will be sourced from galvanized shot and with these amounts of status effect it will be enough to satisfy my base damage punch through to it so that beam can chain to multiple enemies and run an extension to increase my beam width another candidate for such a thing is the teenage cyclone because it works just as the new core but a bit weaker the one i felt in love with was the OcuCore. this weapon is insane brother i have my merciless and the Got a huge and got a shot for base damage. Actually, you can replace secondary merciless with whatever arcane wounds. You can go with secondary encumber for more status effect to increase your base damage on level nice shot. You can go with you can go with Cascadia Flur if you want to uh, source your damage from heat, and you can do it with valence formation. You can go with conjunction voltage. Uh, I don't recommend Deadhead because beams are sucks, and you're actually picking the Occupor because you don't want to aim. So what's the point of having that at? Secondary fortifier if you want to gain over guard, but actually but actually I recommend having that I recommend having Cascadia empowered because of its effect that deals 750 damage matching the damage type of the status effect used. And I just see we're proccing a lot of status effects. You can do the same thing with the Nuko by the way and, and the uh, Cyclone. So it's mix and match. And for the Octico to be more branded, I recommend having the Sentient Surge for the quick chance and uh, static chance. For primaries, I really recommend going with the Team Glacian. I covered this weapon a long time ago. Uh, this weapon is actually a beast. I recommend really using it. Now, creating question here is primary blight. You can go and blight or frost bite. It doesn't matter actually. They both give you the same bonuses with different values. And your base damage will be sourced from galvanized aptitude and you still get your 100% crit chance with Arcane Avenger and your critical delay. Again, if you don't want to use viral, you can use the elementalist mod instead of the faction damage bonus. So it's up to you. Again, with the blast radiation, corrosive mine is my Galaxian is radiation, but I really recommend getting a, a magnetic progenitor because you actually can get radiation from radiated reload. And by the way, any beam that can function the same will be a really good one. How the Troy and Carden is uh, a beast, but I don't think you would want to build for crit, just go all in the status chance. But I mean, uh, Enjoy yourself. You can go with the Bobonicos Old Fire, the Phantasma. Boy, the Phantasma is crazy. So in the end, it's up to you to pick the weapon that you feel nice for you. Just make sure it has a juicy base status chance so you can pop multiple last box and multiple other status effects with it so you can deal crazy amounts of damage. And to add more juiciness to the damage, you can add one downforged green shard to increase your max course of stacks up to 13. Just enough to let a teeny tiny bit of armor to the enemies. My focus of school is literally up to you. I just had Vajran because the loadout was set to Vajran from a previous loadout. And companion, honestly, it doesn't matter. But if you want, uh, use the Panzer for Pophila to increase the chance of uh, drop health orbs and help you survive uh, more and save you in Wawachiwa moments with this build. Or if you want, use the Worm with this build to increase your critical damage and give you extra fire rates and save you from a status effect. And you can carry with the Worm the Vigilante set to increase the possibility of creating an extra crit here on your primary weapons. If you're using a secondary, it doesn't matter what you pick, but I prefer, in my opinion, the Panzer for better survivability. I know Lavos is pretty tanky, but uh, you gotta make sure. And that's it for me, I hope you enjoyed the video, learn something new, please consider subscribing, it's free, kind of want to change your mind, also drop a like, it's very appreciated. Stay tuned for more, and let me know your thoughts down in the comments, and tell me if you want the first descending content. Seriously, I'm really excited about this game. And I'll see you next time in the next video. Bye-bye!